Welcome to ECE 761 Robotics. This is a course offered in the summers at North Dakota State University that covers the mathematics behind robotic manipulators. The lecture notes, homework sets, and solutions are all online on Bison Academy. And the topics that we cover as follows. We start out the semester talking about rotation matrices and translation matrices. Here, the idea if I have a robot, I want to go from the shoulder joint to the elbow joint to the wrist joint, I have a rotation matrix and a translation matrix. Mathematically, this is done with a rotation matrix, this 4x4 matrix that contains a rotation and a translation. If I rotate from one coordinate system to another, I multiply essentially by a 4x4 matrix. What that does, for example, here I have an arrow, if I rotate that about the x axis, the green axis, I see the arrow representing the robot system moving. If I now rotate about the y-axis, the red line, it spins about that axis. And then rotating about the z-axis, the pink line, as follows. So once I can rotate joints on a robot manipulator, I can go from one joint, say the shoulder, to the next joint, the elbow. That's called forward kinematics. With forward kinematics, I specify how the robot looks and what the joint angles are. From that, I can specify the tip position. For example, if I take a robot called the Rhino robot, if I rotate it about the base, here's the arm moving. I then rotate about the shoulder, and then the elbow. This is forward kinematics. Given the joint angles, I can tell you where the tip is. Inverse kinematics is going backwards. If I know where the tip is, say I want to tra trace out a square, what were the joint angles? You can do that by doing some trigonometry. If I know the robot position, the height and angles, I know the tip is, I can go backwards and figure out what joint angles correspond to a given tip position. Once I know the calculations to calculate the joint angles, given the tip positions, I can then specify the tip and calculate where the robot should be. For example, if I want a rhino robot to trace out a square, I know where the tip belongs. That's the points on the square defined every 10 milliseconds. I can use inverse kinematics to figure out what the joint angles are to put you at each point. And then knowing the joint angles, I can draw the robot position. That's inverse kinematics. Path planning then looks at how do I go from point A to point B. The current simulation, if you might notice, has a step discontinuity and velocity. When you take the derivative of that, the acceleration, I'll have a delta function. Acceleration is basically torque. So path planning is how do we go from point A to point B while keeping the acceleration finite. Robot programming then looks at if I can go from point A to point B doing some sort of a curve hit, I can program a robot, tell it to move from one point A to point B, move from point B to point C. What a typical program looks like for a robotic manipulator is this. We tell it to go from point A to point B in three seconds, and it specifies all the different points. That'll give you a move command similar to what we did before, only with finite accelerations. Once we have robotic programming, we'll now look at dynamics. For a robotic manipulator, this is a nonlinear system. To find the dynamics, we use a thing called Lagrangian dynamics. That's an energy-based system. If I can specify the energy in this robot and how the energy changes, that's the dynamics. Once we find the dynamics in general, we'll look at a specific case, a two-link robot. For example here, this would be a two-link robot in free fall. I've got the shoulder joint, the elbow, and if I have no torques, it just falls freely. Once I know the dynamics of a robot, I want to specify the joint torques so that the robot follows a uh, specific path. That's the robot control. The control of the robot arm tries to force it to follow some desired path. We'll be covering that towards the end of the semester. And we'll look at how you specify the joint torques to follow a certain path. For example, here, the light blue line is the desired spot of the robot. That's using path planning to specify the position versus time as I trace out a square. And notice accelerates, moves up the square, then decelerates, comes to a stop at each point. We need that so that the acceleration is finite. The dark blue line is the actual position of the robot. It's not following because the robot has inertia, 
there's Coriolis forces, gravity forces. And if I don't compensate for those, the two will have errors. We'll be looking at how do you force the two to actually track each other with much less error. In essence, compensate for the gravity, inertia, Coriolis forces. That's robotic dynamics. Finally, we'll look at Jacobians. Suppose a robot manipulator wants to hit a wall. The force on the wall is defined in the XY plane. The Jacobian converts tip forces to joint torques. With that, I can see the effect of hitting the wall on the torques on the robot and simulate what happens when you hit a wall. I can then do control, try to maintain a constant force on the wall. As I move up and down the wall, as soon as I leave the wall, the force has to go to zero. That'll be the final topic that we cover in the class, contact forces. So that's kind of the idea behind ECE 761 robotics. It's covering the mathematics behind robotics. The prerequisite for the course is basically a knowledge of trigonometry. We'll be doing a lot of sines and cosines, as well as some calculus with the Lagrangian dynamics. It's kind of a fun course. You get to see how MATLAB works for simulations, as well as the um, theory and mathematics behind controlling robotic manipulators.